Ireland is known for its fiery redheads, freckled skin, and pale blue eyes. But what if I told you there's another Irish face, just as real yet almost forgotten? Jet black hair, ice blue eyes, and skin so fair it seems to hold the winter light. They call them the Black Irish. For centuries, people tried to explain their mystery. Shipwrecked Spaniards, lost Vikings, wandering nobles. But modern genetics has uncovered something far stranger. Because their story isn't about outsiders washing ashore. It's about an ancient bloodline that never left. Who are the Black Irish really? And why does science say their origins are older than Ireland itself? For generations, Irish identity has been told in the language of legend. Heroes, invaders, and myths passed through song and story. Yet deep within the DNA of this island lies a record that no chronicle ever captured. The truth of the Black Irish is not one of shipwreck or conquest, it's the legacy of survival. Modern genetics reveals that Ireland's population has one of the most continuous genetic histories in Europe. Hidden in its genome are the fingerprints of Ice Age hunter-gatherers, Bronze Age herders, and the first Atlantic seafarers who crossed these waters thousands of years ago. Every strand of DNA tells the same story, an island that changed the world less than the world changed it. The mystery of the Black Irish is not about color or invasion. It's about resilience. It's the tale of how isolation preserved a spectrum of beauty and how every Irish face carries echoes of a people who endured when others vanished. If uncovering the truth behind ancestry, evolution, and identity fascinates you, subscribe to Root and Relic. Because the deeper we look into our blood, the more history looks back. For centuries, the Irish coastline has carried stories of lost sailors and whispered bloodlines. When the Spanish Armada was wrecked in 1588, dark-haired survivors washed up along Ireland's western shores. Villagers saw men with olive skin and black hair, and generations later, when children were born with those same features, people said, they came from the Spaniards. It was a story that survived for 400 years, but genetics has finally laid it to rest. Modern DNA sequencing shows no measurable Spanish signature from that era. Those sailors left heartbreak and folklore, but not a legacy in Ireland's genome. Then came the Viking theory. Norse raiders stormed Ireland's coasts in the 9th century, founding cities like Dublin and Limerick. Their Y-chromosome lineages still appear in about 6% of Irish men today, but almost entirely in the East, not in the Western regions where the Black Irish look is most common. Even the Normans, who conquered much of the island in the 12th century, left little trace beyond a few aristocratic families. The great myths of the Black Irish, Spanish, Viking, Norman, are beautiful, but none explain what truly shaped Ireland's dark-haired mystery. Because the real story begins thousands of years earlier, when the island's DNA was rewritten forever. Around 2500 BC, Ireland changed almost overnight. Before that, its first farmers, descendants of Mediterranean voyagers, had lived peacefully for centuries, raising cattle and growing barley across a quiet, green land. But then came the Bell Beaker culture, an enigmatic people who spread across Europe carrying bronze weapons, pottery, and new genes. When they reached Ireland, they didn't just settle, they replaced. Over 90% of the island's previous male lineages disappeared within a few centuries. In their place rose a new genetic signature, the Y chromosome lineage called R1BL21. It's still found in about 65% of Irish men today, making it one of the most dominant paternal lines in the world. These newcomers brought crucial survival traits with them. They carried the mutation for lactase persistence, the ability to digest milk in adulthood. They carried light skin variants from the Eurasian steppe, helping them absorb scarce sunlight. And yet, the genes for dark hair, inherited from earlier farmers, refused to vanish. Ireland became a country of contrasts, pale skin and light eyes balanced by hair black as peat. 
It was a genetic revolution that still defines the island's identity today. Before we move on, tell me what you think. If you had to guess, which ancient group left the stronger mark on Ireland? The early farmers, the Bronze Age newcomers, or the later Vikings? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Because the real roots of the Black Irish go even deeper into the bloodlines that survived long after the battles ended. When geneticists traced Ireland's maternal DNA, they discovered something extraordinary. While men's lineages were replaced during the Bronze Age, women's lineages endured almost untouched. They carried the story of Ireland's continuity, unbroken for thousands of years. Roughly 38% of Irish women share mitochondrial haplogroup H, the same lineage carried by Europe's first farmers. Another 13% belong to haplogroup U, descended from Ice Age hunter-gatherers. Some branches, like U5, are among the oldest in all of Europe, passed down by women who hunted, gathered, and raised families along Ireland's wild coasts more than 7,000 years ago. But their closest genetic cousins weren't in Britain. They were in France, Brittany, and northern Spain. These links reveal that Ireland was part of a vast Atlantic network, families, not armies, moving along the western sea routes thousands of years before the Armada ever sailed. So, while invading powers reshaped Ireland's dynasties, Irish mothers preserved its roots. Their DNA carried the island's memory from prehistory to the present day. And within those maternal bloodlines lay the key to Ireland's diversity, the quiet persistence of both light and dark, red and black, that still defines its people. By the late Bronze Age, Ireland was no longer an isolated island. It was part of a vast Atlantic world. Seafaring traders carried copper, salt, and amber up the western coast of Europe, connecting Iberia, Brittany, and Ireland in a chain of maritime exchange long before Rome or the Vikings existed. Modern DNA studies show that ancient Irish genomes share their closest matches not with the English or the Norse, but with the Basques and Bretons of the Atlantic coast. It means the old legend that Ireland's people came from Spain wasn't entirely wrong. It was simply 5,000 years too old. As the Iron Age began, that genetic bridge slowly closed. Britain was transformed by waves of migration and conquest, while Western Ireland drifted into genetic isolation. For the next 2,000 years, the island's DNA remained remarkably stable. That isolation allowed rare traits, like dark hair combined with light eyes, to survive when they faded elsewhere in Europe. Centuries passed, but those old genes refused to die. And that's where the story turns, from trade and travel to the power of survival itself. When populations shrink or remain cut off from the outside world, evolution starts to echo. This phenomenon, called the founder effect, can make rare traits common simply because there's no new influx of DNA to dilute them. That's what happened in Ireland's West, in counties like Kerry, Cork, and Galway, where families lived in the same valleys for centuries and intermarried within close communities. A 2017 study by the Royal College of Surgeons and Trinity College Dublin revealed that Ireland isn't genetically uniform. It's divided into 10 distinct clusters, and the oldest, most isolated ones are concentrated along the Atlantic coast. Those Western families show the strongest genetic continuity with Bronze Age ancestors and the lowest levels of Viking or Norman influence, sometimes under 3%. Isolation preserved their uniqueness, but it also magnified their vulnerability. When famine and disease struck, entire genetic lines vanished overnight. Yet, the people who endured carried their ancient features forward dark hair, pale skin, and gray or blue eyes that mirrored the Atlantic sky. Tell me, when you picture the Irish face, what do you see first? The fiery redhead or the pale, dark-haired families of the West? Share your thoughts in the comments. Both belong to the same story of endurance. Because in those Western genes, Ireland's oldest identity still survives, quietly, stubbornly, beautifully unchanged.
No other European country displays such striking contrast in its appearance. Ireland is a land where red hair and jet black hair often appear in the same family, sometimes in siblings born only years apart. For decades, it was a mystery until scientists uncovered the tug of war happening within Irish DNA. The key is a gene called MC1R. It decides whether your body produces dark eumelanin or red pheomelanin. Ireland has the world's highest concentration of MC1R variants. Mutations like R151C, R160W, and D294H that give rise to red hair, freckles, and fair skin. But these mutations don't act alone. Other genes like OCA2 and HERC2 control how melanin forms and how light interacts with the eye. Depending on which versions you inherit, you can carry red hair genes yet still appear dark haired. That's why redheads and raven haired cousins often appear within the same Irish lineage. The genes are there in both, just expressed differently. It's a genetic tug of war between past and present, light and dark, ancestry and adaptation. And that rare combination of black hair and light eyes, the hallmark of the black Irish, appears most often in the West, where ancient and modern Ireland still coexist. The paradox of Irish pigment isn't a myth. It's the visible balance of two ancient worlds, the farmers of the South and the herders of the North locked together in one island's blood. Every Irish surname carries an echo of ancestry, tribes, dynasties, and kings who once shaped the islands as destiny. And in many cases, the stories written in old manuscripts now match to the, what science finds in DNA. Take the Uí Níl dynasty, descended from the legendary Nile of the Nine Hostages. Modern genetic studies show that nearly one in five men in Northwest Ireland share a Y chromosome pattern known as the Northwest Irish modal haplotype, a branch of R1BL21. That means hundreds of thousands of men alive today could trace their paternal line back to that one ancient clan. Farther south, the O'Brien family, descended from the High King Brian Baru, reveals something different. Their Y DNA isn't a single neat signature. It's a patchwork of Gaelic, Norse, and even Norman threads. That diversity mirrors Ireland's own past, a landscape shaped by alliances, invasions, and marriages that blurred the lines between conqueror and native. Across the island, names like O'Connor, O'Donnell, Kelly, and Byrne tell similar stories. Each one marks a surviving branch of Ireland's deep genetic tree, roots tangled, branches intertwined. And within those lineages live the same contrasts that define the nation itself, fair and dark, red and black, ancient and modern. If you had to trace your own surname back through history, which region or clan do you think it might touch? Share your guess in the comments. Every name carries a thread in this vast genetic tapestry. Because power decided whose genes spread, but isolation decided which ones endured. And together, they gave Ireland the most distinctive genetic legacy in Europe, the enduring face of the Black Irish. Ireland's uniqueness isn't just visible, it's biological. Its people carry genetic quirks that once offered protection in hard times, but today come with a cost. One of the most famous is the C282Y mutation in the HFE gene, often called the Celtic curse. It causes the body to store excess iron, a dangerous trait now, but a life-saving one in centuries of malnutrition. Roughly one in 10 Irish people carry it, the highest rate on earth. The pattern repeats again and again. The CFTR mutation that leads to cystic fibrosis appears in about one in 19 Irish carriers, possibly once a defense against tuberculosis. Even the genes linked to multiple sclerosis, unusually common in Ireland, may trace back to adaptations that strengthened immunity during ancient epidemics. And then there's lactase persistence, the ability to digest milk as an adult, found in over 95% of Irish people. In prehistoric winters, when crops failed and dairy was all that remained, that single gene could mean the difference between life and death. 
those mutations weren't just statistics, they were survival stories. Proof that isolation didn't only shape Ireland's appearance, it also forged its resilience. For centuries, folklore tried to fill the silence left by lost records. Stories of shipwrecked Spaniards, Viking bloodlines, and hidden nobles became explanations for faces that didn't fit the stereotype. But today, genomics has done what legends never could. It's given those stories dates, numbers, and truth. The Irish genome, studied through thousands of ancient and modern samples, tells us something astonishing. It has barely changed in 4,000 years. 30% comes from Ice Age hunter-gatherers, 40% from early Mediterranean farmers, and 30% from the steppe herders who arrived in the Bronze Age. Since then, the core of that mixture has stayed almost untouched. Viking, Norman, and English genes left small marks in the East, but the West, Kerry, Cork, Galway, remains a time capsule of Ireland's earliest ancestors. That's why modern genetic maps of Europe show Ireland glowing as one of the most distinctive populations on the continent. So, the old legends weren't entirely wrong. There is a link between Ireland and Iberia, just not from the 1500s. It's a connection that began five millennia earlier, in the Bronze Age sea routes of the Atlantic world. Science hasn't erased the myths. It's proved that beneath every legend was a fragment of truth. Every Irish face is a reflection of time. Some carry the fire of the steppe herders, others the shadow of Atlantic farmers. Yet, all are born of the same endurance. Ireland's DNA isn't a single melody. It's a harmony of migrations, losses, and survival that spans 10,000 years. The so-called Black Irish are not outsiders or anomalies. They are living evidence that identity isn't purity. It's persistence. Their features, their genes, their very existence prove that beauty can emerge from contradiction. The freckles and the dark hair, they're not opposites. They're Ireland remembering itself. The story of the Black Irish isn't about outsiders who arrived. It's about ancestors who stayed. Through famine, invasion, and isolation, their DNA carried forward the map of a people who endured when the rest of the world moved on. Every Irish face, red-haired or dark, pale-eyed or freckled, is a page in that story. Together they form the most human truth of all. That survival, not conquest, defines who we are. If this journey into Ireland's ancient bloodlines moved you, subscribe to Root and Relic. Because every week, we uncover another hidden chapter of history, written not in ink but in DNA.